Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. I'm Dr. Steven Ramos, Associate Medical Director with Health Texas Primary Care Doctors. And every week we're going to bring you a video with special guests discussing important health topics. All right, well, welcome to Wellness Wednesday again. And today I have Dr. James Walter here with me over at our Wordsbot Clinic, who recently joined uh, Health Texas Primary Care Doctors. And today we're going to talk about an important topic for this part of the year, and that's the flu vaccine. And so, Dr. Walter, when is the best time to get your flu vaccine every year? Uh, generally around September, October. Uh, it's never too late, though. If you have to wait till later in the year, that's fine. We start giving them around September, though, I think. And then uh, that's probably when I would recommend getting it, September, October would be good. So getting it earlier in the flu season and, and really before the, the flu wave hits is kind of you know, the big key. And typically takes about two weeks before we, re we really start seeing efficacy with the flu vaccine. So right. that's why getting it early is, is the best thing to do. And then some people have, are, you know, worrying, well, I don't want to get it till October. I don't I want, to, want it to wear off too late. When's, how long does the flu vaccine last? Generally, uh, the immunity lasts for about six months. So um, it's probably not too soon to get it in September. You don't have to wait at all. And, and it'll probably be wearing off by about the time flu season ends the next year. So October is fine too, but September is not too early. And so if someone's gotten the flu vaccine, let's say last year, why should they get it this year? Oh, it only lasts about six months. The antibodies tend to uh, be decrease in the blood uh, after that time. And then obviously the, the flu evolves every year and it um, uh, basically mutates and has different proteins and receptors shapes. So uh, you, the, the people who make the vaccine kind of predict what it's going to look like and the new vaccine will be different from the old vaccine, which is why you have to get it the next year as well or you won't have any safety from the one before. Yeah, so getting it yearly is going to be the biggest benefit here. Again, part of the flu, you know, every year changing just a little bit and getting the newer vaccine helps ensure that your immune system is ready for potentially what we estimate to be the new seasonal flu. But also most uh, flu vaccines that are distributed now in the United States also have some components of older flus from the past that were really bad. So to make sure that we maintain immunization and protection um, both throughout the year. And, you know, the other benefit with, you know, continuously every year getting the flu vaccine. So getting it this year is great. The, the best thing that you can do is really getting it every single year following. Right. And we tend to see a lot of built up and, and better protection of, of against the flu the more frequently you get the flu vaccine every right. year. And so, this year, you know, uh, outside of what we've all dealt with with COVID for the past, you know, close to two years now, why is it more important this year than ever to really get the flu vaccine? Well, you don't want to be in the hospital, obviously, this time of year. Or nowadays with COVID, um, some of the hospitals are just overrun. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, uh, if you get flu and COVID at the same time, I mean, you'll just be even sicker than you would otherwise. But uh, the main reason that I would say is because the hospitals are already overwhelmed and you don't want to be adding on to that problem by needing an, I an ICU bed when there really aren't any left. Yeah. So really keeping yourself out of the hospital, preventing yourself from getting more sick than you have to. So yeah. the flu vaccine is not going to prevent you from getting the flu. We can't make that kind of a guarantee. But we do know that people who've gotten the flu vaccine, especially if they've gotten it consecutive years in a row, tend to have shorter cases right. of the flu. So if they get sick, rather than being sick for 10 days, maybe only three or four days. And then also the big thing, much like we've seen with the COVID vaccine, is you're much less likely to end up in the hospital. Uh -huh. So you may get the infection, you may get sick, but you're not going to get as sick as you could have gotten had you not been vaccinated. Yeah, definitely. And then so for this year, with the booster shot being a new topic, um, you know, recently being approved by the, the FDA and CDC for some individuals in the United States. Uh, you know, before when we were giving out the initial COVID vaccines last year in the you know, late winter, mid winter, December, January times, we were kind of strict about, you know, you got to wait at least two weeks before right. you get any other vaccine and so forth. Has that recommendation changed at all? Yeah, yeah, no, you can get the flu vaccine and your booster at the same time. And the only reason I'd say you couldn't is if you were symptomatic or having a fever or something like that. If you're not, <clears throat> go ahead and get that booster if it's recommended by your doctor. Definitely get the flu vaccine. Yeah, so don't wait. No need to push it off. No need to wait an extra couple months or so forth. Your body's smart enough. It'll recognize both and will be able to build up a good immune response uh, 
the important thing is getting your vaccines um, you know, as early as you can. Yep. Um, so a lot of topic that we've had and, and something that we preach for many years about the flu vaccine that some people were pretty hesitant as far as, you know, oh, well, every year I get the flu vaccine, it makes me sick. Oh, right. Tell me yeah. a little bit about maybe what they're experiencing and explain kind of what to expect after you get a flu vaccine. Right. You can develop symptoms after getting a flu vaccine that may feel like the flu. It is not the flu, though. You're, you are feeling the effects of your immune system being activated. That's what you want it to do. It's basically just proving that. You, uh, the vaccine is working essentially, and uh, you will definitely be sicker if you get the flu than the symptoms you get from the flu vaccine. Some people just don't have that reaction. Personally, uh, every time I get a shot, I never had a problem. Knock on wood. Uh, but it uh, it's it's just your immune system activating to the antigens produced uh, introduced by the vaccine. Yeah. So something that can happen, you know, very much <laughs> what we've seen with the COVID vaccine is you can get a fever. Yeah. Sore throat, headache, feel run down, usually could last maybe 24, maybe 48 hours, but then completely resolves. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's kind of an indication that, hey, your immune system is responding and doing the job it needs. Right. Yep. Now, if you don't get those symptoms, it doesn't mean that the vaccine doesn't work. It's just right. I mean you got lucky and just didn't get those symptoms. Exactly. Great. Um, any other tips kind of during this fall season and as flu season starts kind of building up about how to better protect yourself and keep yourself healthy? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can uh, just basic hygiene, wash your hands, wear a mask, social distance, all these things can help prevent it. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a certain point where you, you got to take risks, but um, if you get your flu vaccine, you're much more unlikely to suffer the consequences. But, um, you know, that, that's about it. I mean, I, I take hand sanitizer everywhere I go now, and, and if I go in anywhere, I put hand sanitizer on before and after, and... Um, wear a mask and, you know, all that's different. It's kind of happened since COVID, but that seems to be the best way as far as I'm concerned. To Yeah, I think one of the only, you know, real beneficial fallouts from the entire COVID pandemic is we've all gotten kind of used to, you know, and I think really the big thing is going into the fall season, especially with kids back in school and people a little bit out more, is um, you know, an understanding that if you don't feel well, stay at home, stay away right. from others. Yeah, right? exactly. I think that's one thing as a society and as a culture we've kind of, round against, you know, hey, still go to work, take your, your Tamiflu or take your NyQuil or your DayQuil and, and get back out there. And yeah. you kind of learn that you shouldn't do that. That's how right. these things spread. Yeah, I'm glad that we've uh, learned to accept that, but we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah, and I think last year we got pretty fortunate with a pretty quiet flu season. I know, yeah. And I think it was in a large part because we were pretty hunkered down and, and doing the things that we really should have been doing every yeah, flu season. Funny. Um, <laughs> so COVID. So Again, don't know really what's in store for us this fall. Hopefully we can, you know, mirror what happened last year with a minimal flu season. I don't think I really saw very much of any flu last year, thankfully. Hopefully we can continue that this year. I think a, a good portion of that was because so many people came out and got their flu shot last year. I yeah, know, yeah. yes. And so if we do that every year for the most part, the, the flu season could be you know, very mild and very well controlled and hopefully doesn't take a giant toll on our city. Yeah. Um, so go out there and get your flu vaccine. Make sure you're masking, social distancing, and if you don't feel well, stay away from others, especially high-risk individuals. Mm -hmm. um, how about sleep, nutrition, exercise? I mean, what are some other kind of healthy tips people can do during this time of the year? Um, you know, all those things are important, and, I, you know, that's something that I try to preach to all my patients, but... Um, you know, it, obviously a healthier body has a, a higher functioning immune system. So if you're not getting eight hours of sleep, your immune system's not going to be as good. You don't have a balanced diet. You're not getting those vitamins and minerals needed by the immune system to work. Um, but uh, I mean, there's a billion things that, you know, we could harp on that would make for a, you know, better lifestyle habits. But, um, you know, that that's uh, something that I just talk to my patients about all the time. And um, in general... I'd be happy to talk with any patient about those things, but um, like you said, I mean, those are all gonna—they're all gonna help. They do—they do matter. So every little thing that you do, exercise, diet, sleep, can't really get enough. Yeah, all important. Try to keep your immune system as healthy as you can. So if you do happen to come into contact with flu or cold or COVID, you have a much better chance of you know fighting that off and, and not being too sick. Yeah. So we have some patients watching or some individuals watching out in the community. You know, where's a good place to go and get your flu vaccine? Any Health Texas um, 
clinic. We got 17 around the around the city that you could find. Um, you can go to most pharmacies, have them. I think they even have them at some uh, grocery stores. Uh, it's not hard to find them. They're, they're, they're pretty ubiquitous. So again, all of our clinics uh, offer flu vaccines, uh, most of which free of charge. Most major pharmacies as well. There's also a number of city-sponsored flu drives and, and, and vaccine clinics that are going to be opening up throughout the next couple of months. Uh, really, anywhere you can. Uh, yeah. If you hear about it or if you can get it, get it as soon as you can. Uh, make sure you're well protected. Uh, get your flu vaccine this year. Very important to keep our city healthy and try to avoid any more you know, major uh, social restraints and so forth. Yeah. And Make sure our hospitals stay open so we can treat sick patients. Definitely. Yeah, please get your flu vaccine for both of us. All right. Well, Dr. Walter, I appreciate you coming on and joining me for this and uh, fantastic education information about the flu vaccine. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for listening. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us for Wellness Wednesday. Again, I'm Dr. Stephen Ramos with Health Texas Primary Care Doctors. If you have any questions or want to reach out to us, our phone number is 210 731 4800, or you can visit us on our website at healthtexastexas.org.